Like even today, when all the bombing is go going over there, yeah. people work in the fields, we're traveling over here. The restaurant now is full with people that come uh, to, to dine and tour the Golan Heights, and maybe also take a look at the world that's going next to us. Right now, we're just about 300 yards from the new border fence that Israel has built since the start of the civil war in Syria. Jabhat al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda affiliate, they're just on the other side of that fence now, controlling a lot of this territory on your border. How does that make you feel? Hearing the news about ISIS, they think, okay, thanks God if we don't have ISIS here. This is one of the top tourist destinations in the Israeli-controlled Golan Heights. Up here, on a clear day like today, there's a great view of volcanic hills, sprawling vineyards, and Syria's civil war. So take this scene with you, this surreal moment of being here standing up on this volcanic mountain. There is Z, Jabhat and Nusra party here together with ISIS against Assad, 52 miles away from here. The guide is a bit confused. ISIS, for now, is nowhere near here. But that is artillery and mortar fire from the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Al-Nusra Front and the Syrian military, locked in a battle for control of the road to Damascus. As tourists watch the action here, so does a team of United Nations observers, or at least what's left of it. UN peacekeepers have been monitoring this disputed border since 1974, the end of Israel's last war with Syria. But this past August, Al-Nusra took 45 Fijian peacekeepers prisoner when it took control of the border crossing. The soldiers were released two weeks later, but it was enough to spook the force into abandoning its post in Syria. Now they watch the war from the same place as the rest of us. We made several formal attempts to interview the commander of the observer force, but his spokesman told us it wasn't a good time to talk. So when we spotted these Fijian UN observers, we tried to talk to them. Hi, yeah. are you from the UN? From the observer mission? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, We're... we cannot say anything. We are not allowed to say anything. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Nothing at all? No, I cannot, I cannot answer that. <laughs> are you observing now? Is that what you're doing? No, no, we're just a tourist. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like tourists. No. Thank you very much for that. UN guys aren't too talkative. They must be pretty embarrassed that they don't have their checkpoint anymore. scared them all away. I mean, if they're scared of me, it's no wonder that they're not at their uh, checkpoint down there anymore. Not far from the lookout is Kibbutz Merom Golan, home to about 100 families who work as farmers and in tourism. This popular restaurant is run by the kibbutz, and it's where many UN observers and tourists grab a steak and a glass of local wine after watching Syria's civil war. Ari Golanski manages the restaurant, and he says life hasn't really changed since the Al-Nusra front sees the nearby border crossing. Listen, you're in a war zone, you need a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> he took us on a horseback ride to show us how life goes on. We go up the mountain, so we have the view of the other side of the mountain. Giddy up. No, they don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> this, car, this car literally has a mind of its own. Like even today, when all the bombing is go going over there, yeah. people work in the fields, we're traveling over here. Uh, the restaurant now is full with people that come uh, to, to dine and tour the Golan Heights and enjoying the weather. And maybe also take a look at the world that's going next to us. It's a weird juxtaposition, being over here so close to it and uh, you know, pretending that you're just on a nature trail. You know, some tourists come because of that. You get like uh, people that want to see that. You don't have a lot of spots where you can be like observers from the side to drink coffee, to sit by and see like a war zone. That was another big one. The sounds today are far in the distance, but increasingly the war is spilling into Israeli territory. The Israeli military says it shot down a Syrian aircraft. The military says the plane infiltrated Israeli airspace over the Golan Heights. It's unclear what may have happened to the pilot. This happened in late spring. The official story 
was that the Israelis shot down the Syrian Sukhoi 24 aircraft after it flew into the Golan Heights, and that both the pilot and the co-pilot ejected into Syria. But Ari says he and his neighbors saw what really happened. Yeah, they survived and then they were treated here and go back to Syria after that. So they landed on the Israeli side? Yeah. Can you show me where the uh, jet was shot down? Well, approximately here, in this, in this area. Wow. Okay. That was a big one. Beautiful scenery, huh? Have you ever had any shells come down in this area? Yeah, a few. During the night, we, we never saw it during the day. And here you see the crater of a, of a missile that landed here a while back. Oh, this is the crater from, yeah. uh, from a missile? Yeah. yeah, well, what can be done about this massive civil war in Syria? Well, again, I'm not the address to ask this, uh, this question. Yeah. But uh, people get killed there on a daily basis. The question is uh, who's willing uh, to interfere and stop it? You know, we, we don't think we, sh we are not part of the problem and we don't have to be part of the solution. We will defend ourselves if we need to, we are ready for that. But look, we're traveling here, there's a bomb going on over here and we don't feel scared. We don't feel like uh, we're in any threat. So, so, f so far for us, we just feel bad for the citizens that get killed over there. That's the reality. A few miles from the kibbutz is an abandoned Syrian military training facility. A friend of Ari's brings us to the roof after warning about possible sniper fire. I thought we weren't supposed to go out on the roof. We are not supposed, but just for a quick view. Jabat al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda affiliate, they're just on the other side of that fence now, controlling a lot of this territory on your border. How does that make you feel? Hearing the news about ISIS, they think, okay, thanks God that we don't have ISIS here. <laughs> if Al-Qaeda call ISIS crazy, yeah. so we said, okay. We'd so rather have maybe, them. Yeah. Everything we is have, relative, huh? Yeah. Seems like that for them also keeping the border quiet, it's a, it's a common entrance. Right now, we're just about 300 yards from the new border fence that Israel has built since the start of the civil war in Syria. There's an Israeli flag on this side over here, a minefield left over from the wars with Syria in the 60s and 70s. But just over there, beyond the UN checkpoint, there's a building with the black flag of al-Nusra flying on the top. Yeah, 